Good evening and welcome to the Capital Market. I'm Edi Diong Iwang. The coronavirus outbreak is causing widespread concerns and economic hardship for consumers, businesses and communities across the globe. The situation is changing quickly with widespread impact and unprecedented risk across a broad spectrum of the financial market. But tonight, we'll turn our focus to the private equity market in Nigeria and I'm being joined by Yomi Jembewo, co-founder and managing director of Cardinal Stone Capital Advisors. Good evening, Yomi. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening, Eddie Dion. Thanks for having me. So how badly has the COVID-19 pandemic affected private equity in Nigeria and how are private equity firms surviving the pandemic? Thanks for that question. Um, it's affecting us um, just as it's affecting everybody else. But um, basically, there are four categories, depending on where you are as a fund manager. One, if you're fundraising, this would be a really difficult time uh, to close your fund because um, your limited partners are either reassessing or holding back to see how your market, Nigeria, Africa, uh, is impacted by this and if they still want additional exposure into the market. Two, if you're looking to deploy capital uh, or if you're in the middle of a transaction, uh, many of the transactions have to kind of take a pause. You want to see how the businesses are being affected by this. You want to see if there's a change to pricing, if there's a change to the viability of the business that you're talking to. And so that might cause a delay in the transaction or in some cases, kill the transaction. Uh, third is if you've deployed already, and you have businesses that are kind of suffering from the impact. So you're working very closely with your man, uh, with your managers and the owners of those businesses to mitigate the risks and the challenges of uh, COVID-19. And the fourth is if you're on your way to either closing and returning capital or exiting a transaction, uh, it would probably cause to a delay of either an exit or you would have to extend the life of your fund. In terms of how we are reacting as managers, uh, two key things. Like, as I said, you're working closely with your portfolio companies, uh, working with them to address their liquidity concerns, assess the viability, and work with them to strategize if any kind of pivoting is required. On the other hand, you need to basically do some stakeholder management with your LPs, your investors. Um, keep them abreast of what's going on if you need any help. Um, and uh, just, you know, uh, the sooner they know what's going on with your portfolio, the better. So it's not bad news all around us as there are some sectors that benefit from the, um, the coronavirus. So are there any benefits for private equity in a volatile market? Well, I mean, I, I, would, I would hate to use the word benefit because the whole world is suffering right now. And um, there's, there's, there are a lot of challenges all across the board. However, I think if you're a manager who has not deployed a lot of your capital, you're sitting you're feeling better. Why? Because a lot of businesses are going to be repriced. Once you've invested and there's devaluation in currency, for example, you've already taken a hit. So if you've not invested already, you can take a step back. Some sectors that were looking really good are going to struggle for some time. Hospitality, leisure, travel. So if you're in the middle of closing that, those kind of deals, you probably take a step back and re reassess. However, some sectors are proven to be resilient. Uh, healthcare right now, everybody's jumping on healthcare. Technology, um, and then, um, however, you have to be careful. Uh, private equity is a long-term business, so you don't want to be getting into fads. So, for example, if people are making sanitizers, um, I mean, you know, the question is, is this a six-month thing? Is this a 12-month thing? You don't want to be jumping on fads. So it's a good time to take a look at what sectors are resilient. Though healthcare and food, for example, are proven to be resilient, their supply chains are also challenged. So when you're looking at those businesses, you need to say, okay, there might be opportunities here, but what are some of the challenges I'm likely to face so that you have a good investment plan? Talking about repricing, now one of the effects of the crisis on companies is a repricing of asset valuation, putting a number of assets undervalued on their own and some well discounted. From the perspective of a private equity investor, this is good news, but what about the startup or the, the business you're investing in? Okay, you said startup. So first of all, as a private equity investor, we don't typically look at startups. We leave that for the venture capital, our venture capital colleagues. That's their expertise. We typically look for businesses that have kind of proven their thesis. They've had a couple of years of audited financials, and then they need growth capital. That's, that's what we do. The venture guys deal with the startup businesses. But going back to your question on repricing, it's good, but it also could be tough because, yes, Things need to be repriced, but it takes time for the business owners to 
understand and accept that. Look, think about it. If you're in the middle of closing a deal, uh, you're in the market and we've agreed a price and then it starts raining, all of a sudden I say, look, the price has changed. No matter how much you agree, it, ta it takes some time for you to come to terms with it. So what, what's likely going to happen is people are going to take a step back. They might stop talking for a while. They might come back to the table. In a place like Nigeria where uh, there's been some repricing of the currency, but we anticipate possibly some more repricing, a lot of deals are going to either hold on until we have clarity on that or um, unless the, 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 uh, the business owners are ready to agree to the investor's projection of a conservative um, um, new uh, currency pricing. So although it's good news for the investor, um, it could also prolong the ability to close deals and even the viability of some deals in some cases. Is it likely that the scope of due diligence will change going forward? Um, I, I'm not sure I would say the scope of due diligence will change because there are a number of things that we must look at on every deal, and that doesn't change because of coronavirus. I think, however, the way we look at certain sectors and the way we look at some things that are fait accompli, some things that are, that are, that are not um, up for question, uh, we'll be questioning them. So the validity of some assumptions will, um, will be assessed. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, some people know that the cost of doing business in Nigeria is very high, uh, office space, cost, and all that. I mean, there are questions right now being asked about how do you do certain businesses? Do you, do you need so many people in the office? Do you need so much uh, infrastructure? Now, this might be a, a short-term uh, situation, but some businesses might actually adopt that long-term. So I'm not sure it's the scope of due diligence that changes. It's the scope of uh, assessing the viability of businesses and the things that the risk, the risk impacts or the potential risks for certain businesses. How much of a concern are challenges such as currency valuation, the economic slowdown in China, and low oil and commodity prices for private equity players? For a country like Nigeria, where, number one, our currency is highly dependent on commodity prices, oil prices, it's huge. Anything that happens to oil prices is huge because oil, uh, we get a lot of our national income from oil. That's how we defend our currency if we can defend our currency, um, there's likelihood that uh, there's going to be shortage um, and there's going to be a devaluation. And a lot of our funds uh, are hard currency, uh, usually dollar denominated. Uh, we get capital in dollars. We have to return um, capital in dollars. We do deals in Naira, you know, in, in, in many instances, pegged to the dollar. But we have to assume certain exchange rates and certain um, reasonable amount of devaluation annually. So when... When an expected situation like this happens and what's going on with the oil prices and there's going to be a major, uh, major um, dip um, in the value of uh, the currency, there are a lot of questions. Uh, it, it makes gives a lot of questions on pricing a deal, on the viability on many deals, because many deals you earn in Naira, but we're investing dollars and we're hedging for the devaluation. So in some cases, it might actually kill the viability of a deal that you were, that you were looking at. Uh, and I think finally is... In some cases, you're going in for a stake in a business, right? And um, you don't also want to overwhelm the ownership of that uh, business so you don't discourage the, the owners. When there's devaluation and it means your dollar is worth more, it means you're taking more of the business. So sometimes it just kills the deal. In his article on turning the COVID-19 tragedy into an opportunity for a new Nigeria, the central bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, says one of the CBN's short-term policy priorities is to embark on a project to get banks and private, private equity firms to finance homegrown and sustainable healthcare services that will stop medical tourism out of Nigeria. What is your take on this? Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, we wish um, things like this had happened earlier. We, it's a welcome development. Uh, we, we hope it's not a short-term, uh, medium-term, but it's a long-term um, um, initiative, um, and uh, we we jump on it. Uh, we're looking to make some investments in that space, and we think the um, ecosystem needs it dramatically. Is for all, but then are there any concerns or worries that need to be fixed by the government before this project takes off? Um, no, uh, I mean, look, 
there's nothing that's perfect in any market and definitely not here. So things around regulation, things around support, things around just the infrastructure and um, things that would help um, healthcare businesses be able to get their feet on the ground. We know even from your home in Nigeria to anything you do, you often have to take care of all your infrastructure, power, light, things like that. In a space like healthcare, unless you want to serve the top 1%, 2%, many times it's difficult to provide all that infrastructure and yet build a viable business. Investors are ready to look at those things. Investors are ready to do them. However, we need support, you know, tax breaks and things like that. Any of that stuff helps. It further helps us, you know, be able to make the business case to go in, uh, especially when a lot of the help is not just needed in the top 1%, where a lot of or the top echelon, where a lot of the private equity capital goes, but more towards the masses. And we would actually like to make more investments in those spaces. It's just that the more support we can get to make our investment cases viable, the better. So how can private equity firms in Nigeria prepare for post-pandemic big wins? Wow. Um, again, it's um, keep your feet on the ground. First of all, it's, it's a good place to be if you're a manager on the ground, because today, um, you, you know, even traveling in between borders is a problem. We're in the middle of a deal in Ghana, for example, and we, we are, you know, you know, closing our due diligence is being, is being challenging. So being on the ground is a good thing too. Having capital is a good thing. Three, not being in a hurry um, to close during these times, particularly if you're just meeting um, uh, managers. However, let's recognize that this too shall pass. Um, this is a bump in the road. Um, we've seen different dips before. This is just another dip. It's, it's a crazy big dip, but this too shall pass. And um, businesses will be challenged. They will, some will die. They will leave customers that need services, that need products. So us as private equity uh, players, we need to be looking at those resilient sectors that people will continue to consume, people will continue to ask for, and back the managers that show that they are resilient through these times. Back them to pick up a lot of what is left unserved by the time this is over. So a lot of companies have now realized, a lot of companies and sectors have now realized that how they used to do things now may not really, you know, be the best due to the COVID-19. What does the future of private equity look like? You know, private equity is a long term. Um, it's a long term game, right? We raise capital for 10 years. We're investing for five years. Uh, we're working with managers and owners for five to seven years in some cases. So, you know, I, I don't think private equity changes due to COVID-19. And I think this is a time also where, you know, like every other sector, uh, there will be some separation, right? There will be, the, you know, it, it, you know, there will be good deals, there will be bad deals. And that's why stakeholder management is important. Working actively with your portfolio company, with your LPs, because it's not just about making good returns. It's about being, being a great custodian, being able to explain when, you know, um, something beyond your control happens and what did you do about it? So I think private equity will be resilient. It will continue to do what it does. Um, and um, we, you know, it's interesting, as, as soon as this happened, um, we've been actively engaging with our LPs. Um, today, I was earlier on a call with the MD of one of our companies. Yesterday, we were. In the next couple of days, I mean, we're actively engaging. This is what private equity do. Uh, uh, we, we are partners. We, we, we don't just give capital and say where are our returns. So I think this is actually further confirming the validity of the private equity um, investment class and why we should look more to it in this market. I think this is a good place to leave the conversation. Yomi Jemi Benwo, the co-founder and managing director at Cap Capital, Cardinal Stone Capital Advisors. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good one. We'll turn our focus to Nigeria's banking sector when we return from this quick break. Stay with us.